back to the room. <laughs> so this morning um, we have three three guests that are here: uh, Michelle Forrest from California State Parks, and Mary Lou and Chuck Goodwin. And um, I'm going to start with Mary Lou. Mary Lou um, is a Fortuna Garden Club member since 1972. She also has held several offices in the California Garden Club. She was club president and the Humboldt District President uh, Director, Humboldt District Director. She also has um, served as a gardening and landscape design consultant. She joined the Eureka Sequoia Garden Club in 2010, and she's just finished up a four-year term as president. And during her four years, she had a program call, called Garden Jewels, and she would um, have a team of club members and go out and evaluate and look at gardens and landscape designs in the city of Eureka and then recognize people for their efforts. She's given 300 of those recognitions. Right now she's serving as the California Garden Club Chair for the Stagecoach Hill Azalea Project and for the Arbor Day, Arbor Day Project. And this is a property that um, we're going to talk about this morning. And Chuck Goodwin is uh, here. He's husband, not brother. Um, he's also a member of the Garden Club. He's been in the club since 2008. He's just completed a two-year term as the district director for the Humboldt. And it's under California Garden Club, so it's a, an organization with a few tiers. Um, he's also the district, or the state repurposing and recycling chairman. He's a former Rotary member from Eureka Club and a Paul Harris Fellow, and he served 12 years on the uh, Eureka City Council, and he was the um, CEO of the Eureka Chamber of Commerce. Um, we're going to have Mary Lou come up. And... Good morning. Good morning. <coughs> uh, many of you have been asking, where is this Stagecoach Hill Azalea Reserve? Isn't that just right around Arcata? Well, actually, no. The portion that I'm just going to talk about is the two-mile stretch of property on Highway 101. Uh, it's 40 acres, and it's five miles north of Trinidad. Uh, as you come up at that area, you'll see a sign that says Cane Road. It only goes to the east, and you go up the hill, and then see the big California State Park sign. Follow the arrow, go on up to the top of the hill where the parking lot is. And that's where you'll start your adventure to see the Stagecoach Hill Azaleas. Uh, I couldn't find any written uh, story about the creation of this Azaleas, but I can tell you from other information that in the 1950s, the Rhododendron Society Journal contains articles by Dr. Mossman from uh, Washington State. He talks about taking field trips each Memorial Day weekend to Humboldt County. That's 50 years worth of coming to Humboldt County to see the azaleas on Stagecoach Hill Road north of Trinidad. Some of his uh, um, cuttings uh, are uh, in his private collection, and some of them he's given to botanical gardens. So the Stagecoach Hill azaleas, commonly known as Rhododendron occidentale, are spread out all over the, the western United States. Currently, a man by the name of Red Cavender uh, lives in Oregon, and he comes down every year in the spring, but especially in the fall, because he takes uh, the collection of seeds back to his nursery so that he can grow on the plants and to make new crosses of uh, flowers. <clears throat> the story becomes more interesting when, in 1980, uh, Mrs. Milton R. Bell, the California Garden Club president, just happens to live next door to William Penn Mott, who was the director of the California State Parks. And they heard through the grapevine this the 40 acres of the Stagecoach Hill was going to be subdivided and put into homes. They thought that was a terrible waste of property. And so they convinced the California Garden Clubs to have a, a project to raise $60,000 to pay for those that property. This was accomplished, and in 1984, we had a special dedication. I must say at that time, that was when I was the Fortuna Garden Club president, 
and I came to the dedication of that of the special property, and we had a special banquet at that time as well. The property was given to the California State Parks for them to take care of. Unfortunately, since that time, little has changed. 30 hours per year has, was occasionally spent by the state parks trying to keep ahead of the invasive alder trees, the Sitka spruce trees, ferns, native grasses, blackberry vines, blackberry vines, blackberry vines, salal uh, and cyanosis. Uh, it was just recently in 2015 that I became interested again in that piece of property and called a meeting of my friends in the California Garden Clubs, the California Native Plant Society, and the American Rhododendron Society. And we met with the California State Park employees, and they finally, reluctantly, agreed to repaint the signs, so that the, which hadn't been done since uh, 1984, spend a little bit more time cleaning the invasive and native plants, <clears throat> and to improve the trail. The trail in many places is about this wide on a slope. And the vegetation keeps growing and growing, and so it's harder and harder to use the trail. Good things that happened, though, that signs for the other native plants were requested, and a pamphlet was to be designed for visitors. And you'll see that later today. No action was forthcoming on building fences, providing restrooms and water, providing any security on the 40 acres, or paving the private road to the area. And I suppose that's good because the elk and the deer and the raccoons and the cougars and the skunks still enjoy the property. And we see them occasionally when you were up there to taking the trail. Just recently, in 2016, as the drought in California uh, consumed many wildflowers throughout the state, I was afraid in particular that this area overnight could have a fire and we would lose the whole area forever. So California Garden Club members formed and adopted a Stagecoach Hill propagation project. Our idea is to create 300 plants, to have those in reserve, give those to other botanical gardens, and to have them available uh, to replant on the reserve in case there is a destructive fire. Uh, this past year, uh, the American Rhododendron <coughs> Society may, you may have seen their advertisements for their international uh, conference and convention that was held in Eureka. And they offered a, actually four uh, tours to the Stagecoach Hill area. Many people from all over the United States, Europe, Denmark, Sweden, uh, were excited to see these fa famous azaleas. Uh, in preparation for that, <coughs> the California State Parks did hire Cal personnel, Cal Fire personnel, and they provided 600 hours of work. In addition to that, the California Garden Club people, people locally spent 150 hours of work. Uh, and the California State Parks Administration came through with 150 hours of work. So this place was gorgeous and beautiful last April, end of, the, end of April, when all of these international visitors came to Humboldt County. Uh, I'm happy to report that in the future, we're told that the Americans with Disabilities Act has dictated that a new trail is going to be provided, one that is more level and will be, of course, handicap accessible, especially for people in wheelchairs. And I do want to just point out in conclusion that, uh, just a reminder, that it is illegal to remove any materials from any California state park unless you have a scientific uh, permit granted by them in advance. So the Garden Club people, though we've been coming up and taking cuttings just recently, we have approval to do that. Uh, if you want to help me on my project, which is the propagation part of uh, creating the azaleas, uh, you can make financial donations. We have some forms here today. Um, those forms include opportunities for you to have a special certificate uh, that can be given in honor or in memory of a friend or a relative. So we hope that you'll be more interested in, first of all, going up and seeing the azaleas. Uh, the very best time is always Memorial Day weekend. That's why Dr. Mossman came originally. <clears throat> That's when everything is in full bloom. Though it does last for almost three months, so up until about the first of September. At this point, uh, the flowers are all gone, and there's just seed pods on the plants, but they're still 
uh, full and they, they are not evergreen and they will lose all of their leaves in the winter time. So at, if you visit in February and March, you'll just see the blackberry vines and <laughs> ferns and lots of sticks. <laughs> so we hope that you'll take a trip up there sometime this year. Karen? morning. She's from San Diego and she moved here in 1993 to come to Humboldt State University. She has a Bachelor of Science degree in Wildlife Management from 1999. She's worked for the State Park since 1996 and she was first a park aide at Patrick's Point and then a seasonal biologist and she now is an environmental scientist since 2006. Um, she's conducted a variety of natural resource projects within the North Coast Redwoods District. She is the Invasive Species Management Program Lead for the District and oversees rare plant species monitoring <coughs> and western azalea management and is the District's Natural Resource Volunteer Coordinator and she's been our liaison with the State Parks. me. Um, Mary Lou covered a lot, but um, <coughs> we'll, I'll cover a little bit more because um, we actually have two azalea areas in our district. So, let's see which one. Okay. so Western, Azale uh, Western Azaleas, just wanted to kind of give you a background on them if you're not familiar with the plant. Uh, it's the only species of azalea growing west of the Rockies. So this is just a picture of them generally in California and Oregon. And then this is a map of California where they're generally can be found. Um, so they're closely related to the California rhododendron, which we have throughout Humboldt County in our redwood forests. And that is an evergreen. Um, so here's a picture of our rhododendrons. Um, and that's evergreen versus the azaleas, as Mary Lou mentioned, are deciduous shrubs. And they require almost completely full sunlight and cannot tolerate shade. Um, so this is just a couple shots of what the azalea bushes look like um, when they're blooming. And then they produce colorful, fragrant flowers. They smell really good. And like Mary Lou said, between April and July is usually the best time to view them here in Humboldt County. And these are some pictures that Mary Lou and Chuck took um, up at Stagecoach. Just some different shots of how beautiful they look. I wish you could smell them too. <laughs> um, so within California State Parks, um, the memo just came out actually uh, two days ago, we officially have 280 state park units. So they could be beaches, they could be um, OHB parks, they could be a state park. Um, and then within the North Coast Redwoods District, we have 21 parks. And that goes from the Oregon border to Laytonville. And we have over 170,000 acres in our district. So there's a lot of area for us to manage when it comes to natural resources. Um, and then within those, uh, within the district, we have two uh, Western Azalea Management Areas. So you have Azalea State Reserve is usually what we call it, but Azalea State Natural Reserve, and then the Stagecoach Hill Management Area. So I'm going to talk a little bit about both of those. So Azalea State Reserve is located um, off of 101, off of North Bank Road. It's about 30 acres. Um, it's primarily Azaleas, and we also have a little section that is Sitka Spruce Forest. Um, it was created in 1943, and at that time, there were native uh, wild azaleas there, but there were also folks that had been planting in that area because they owned that property. So just like Stagecoach Hill, it was recognized way back in the 40s by state parks or whoever was around that this area should be protected. Um, so, and like I said, it was created for the preservation of the Western azaleas and for folks to come in and view it. Um, and there's two loop trails that you can see, and there's a parking lot and a little um, picnic area. So there are a couple picnic tables at the parking lot and, like I said, the two loop trails. Then we have Stagecoach Hill Management Area. So that is technically within Harry Merlot State Recreation Area. Um, some people don't know about that park because most people think it's part of Humboldt Lagoon State Park. So Humboldt Lagoon State Park tends to be on the west side of 101 and Harry Merlot is the east side of 101. 
uh, but we just kind of manage it as one big park. Um, so does this have a pointer? Yeah. Okay, well, so you can see on the very left side is uh, Big Lagoon, um, and so that's 101, and then the purple is Cane Road, and then the yellow is the loop trail that goes through the Sitka Spruce Forest and um, the Azaleas. So, as uh, Ruby already gave you a history of how that area was acquired, um, and it's one of the most extensive stands of wild azaleas on the North Coast. And I also mentioned that there's no other state park that actually manages for azaleas except for the two up here. So within state parks, this is the two areas that we're really trying to hold on to that, um, to that type of habitat. Um, and then there's one loop trail, and like Mary Lou um, said, it is scheduled to be upgraded and to be completely ADA, um, meaning accessible, meaning wheelchairs, blind, anybody that might have a disability will be able to use this trail. We will also be improving the parking. That's a very small little parking area, but that will also be upgraded so that um, anyone with disabilities can use it. Um, unfortunately, there's no plans for bathrooms or water or anything like that. Um, it's just not feasible with the budget that state parks gets. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention, I should have mentioned in the other slide, is I said 170,000 acres in the district. We get about $180,000 to do all natural resource work mm -hmm. each year. So it's a dollar per acre. So, you know, the fundraising that Mary Lou is talking about and that some, you know, that we haven't done as much management as we should in these areas is partly due to just have to decide what is the fire we're going after next. Um, if that makes sense. Um, so hopefully things will change, um, that maybe state parks will get a little bit more of the budget in California one day. Um, but until then, we're writing grants, doing fundraising, that sort of stuff. Um, so uh, let's talk a little bit about management. I also want to show, show you a picture that's kind of a view from the trail. So the one thing about Stagecoach that you don't get at, at McKinleyville at Daily State Reserve is you get beautiful vistas of the Pacific Ocean. So it's really nice. Um, so it's a transitional vegetation zone. Um, so what that means is it used to be a grassland, then shrubs move in, then trees move in, and if you don't manage it, it's gonna turn into Sitka Spruce Forest or whatever forest is around it. So it takes active management, um, and that means it takes you know, manpower, person hours, and funding, unfortunately. Um, wish we could do it all with volunteers, but that's not gonna happen. Um, so with grasslands, we go in and we try to just brush them, mow them, try to reduce that competing brush. And for the most part, it's not really invasive, non-native plants that are the issue, it's actually native plants. So our trees moving in. And this is the only time that we actually remove native plants in state parks. That seems completely counterintuitive of what we're there to do, but because we will lose these plants and lose this habitat type, we have to go in and remove the spruce and the alders and the cascara and the competing brush. Um, we do try to leave, see so note this, in certain other shrubs that aren't competing with the azaleas that are native, just so that it's more of a shrub land um, and a little bit more diversity. Um, and so it requires continuous maintenance. Um, up at Azalea, or up at Stagecoach, um, since I began in 2000 doing natural resource work for the district, I have tried to get up there every, every other year, or maybe every three to four years, just when funding could be available. Um, definitely with Mary Lou, um, this has you know, reinvigorated both me and our district that we should be taking care of this a little bit more often. Um, I'm really having concerns though with McKinleyville because we haven't been down there in a long time and I'm seeing a lot of large trees moving in. So I may be shifting, if I have enough funding this year, we may be doing a little bit of work down there just to try to get some of those larger trees removed because we did do a really good brushing last year um, up at Stagecoach. But we do have some burn tiles we need to burn. Um, with an inmate crew, with an Hellfire crew, so it does not escape, don't worry. Um, so, um, yes. I know it was short. I know. <laughs> I don't know if that's, I mean, that's what I taught you. I wanted to hear about maybe, or what you really wanted me to talk about. It's just our two azalea areas, what it takes to manage them, um, and that it's a great place to go visit. They're just day use, but it's a nice short hike, but um, it's worth it when they're flowering. Did you guys have any questions? Yes. I was wondering, um, hey Michelle, um, I was wondering how how much of the natives at both places, I mean, how many of them do you think are native, the azaleas versus planted? Well, up at Stagecoach, I believe they're all wild stock, okay. that nothing, if anything has been planted there, it's been from collecting on that site, and oh, so it's genetically still connected. Now, when it comes to um, McKinleyville, 
That one, I mean, it's newspaper articles. I mean, it's just a little bit of a file that we're trying to gleam off of because no one's really uh, around anymore that was part of that purchase and, and creating that park. Um, so it's just kind of like some were wild and some may have been planted. But back in the 30s and 40s, the plantings were probably from wild stock before there was a big nursery kind of trade and crossing and that sort of thing. And you guys are working with CMPS, so you've probably already pursued this, but could you get help via people that wanted to salvage um, native plants? I mean, like, you know, with Caltrans, we're always, we're, we've been trying right. to work on stuff, but like either for mitigation work when they had to do it or for outgrowing with some of the native plant yeah, nurseries so, or anything? Or is that so on Stagecoach Hill, it's mostly coyote brush and our native bunch grass. So the native bunch grass, we just mow to the ground, it comes back every single year, it's super vigorous. And then the coyote brush too, that totally resprouts. I would love to have the time and the money to dig out that coyote brush and possibly use it as a rest you know, somewhere else where we're doing restoration. But it's just not feasible to really get those pulled out unless they're small because it's going to just leave a big hole. It's going to take a lot to get those removed. And what little bit of funding we have, we just have enough time to go in and cut it down. Uh, but definitely there is an op I mean, there is something that we could uh, consider. Um, we have had the area checked because, we're to, uh, because um, both rhododendrons and azaleas are carriers of sudden oak death. Um, they're not susceptible to it, but they do carry it. Um, so we actually have had that area checked for sudden oak and got a certification from the county that we can move material from there up to our nursery in Delmar County. So that is where our nursery person, Dan, has, is trying to be growing the seeds and trying to uh, see how the cuttings are going to go. Um, McKinleyville, that's a whole different story. There's a lot more exotics down there, and um, those are a lot larger trees, and um, yeah, coyote brush too. So it's just the species that we're dealing with are a little bit harder to remove. Okay, as you were saying, ferns and salal and stuff. And yeah. Like, oh, we could always salvage those for planting it. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can talk about that for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Great. Oh, thank you. Um, before you move, uh, and uh, Chuck and uh, Mary Lou, uh, in appreciation of your speaking oh, name, we're going to make a donation to the Wheel Foundation, Wheelchair Foundation, uh, in your name. So, Great, thank yeah, you. Absolutely.